This book is called Sarah Morton's Day, A Day in the Life of a Pilgrim Girl, and it's by Kate Waters, and photos are by Russ Kendall. Again, these books um, use photographs from Plymouth Plantation, where there are people there that pretend that they um, are living like the pilgrims in the Wampanoags. November 12th, 1627. Good day. My name is Sarah Morton. My family sailed to America four years ago on a ship called the Anne. We came to seek freedom from the Church of England. First, my family settled in Holland, where I was born. Life in Holland was hard for us, so we set sail for the New World. My father died that first winter. This spring, mother married Goodman, Goodman Kempton. I am learning to call him far, father, and I am trying hard to earn his love. Come thee with me. Let me show thee how my days are. This is my village. It is called Plymouth Plantation. At sunup, when the cr the cockerel crows, I must get up and be about my chores. I put on my overgarments. Look at all these steps to getting dressed. So we have first, she puts on her petticoat, and then her stockings, and her garters help keep her socks up, her stockings up. Then we have her petticoat, which goes, which is looks like kind of like a skirt. And she's still tying her petticoat. Then she's got her waistcoat, which is an actual coat. And then her coif, which looks like a hat. And her apron. And then a little bag, which is called a pocket. And shoes. And finally, she rolls her bedding into a corner. The fire is mine to tend. I throw brush on the red coals to make them dance. Mother and I make the hasty pudding. I lay the table with clean cloths, bowls, and spoons. I serve mother and my new father first. I must stand at my place to eat. Perchance my new father will make a stool for me. So here she is helping with the breakfast cooking. And here she is eating. She doesn't have a stool, so she's standing. With the table scraps I have collected, I go out to feed the chickens. Because I have forgotten to latch the pen, I must run our hens a game of chase. Oops, she's got to chase the chickens back. <laughs> at milking time, I find my best friend Elizabeth Warren at the pen. As we milk, we tell each other secrets. Today, I tell her of a dream about my real father. I miss him often, but I do not speak of him to anyone save Elizabeth. I do not, to wish, I do not wish to seem ungrateful to my new father. So here they are, milking the goat. Elizabeth likes to remember the time before she came here to the New World. She tells me of shops in England full of colored ribbons and fairs with women dancing. After milking, I muck the garden to make it rich for planting for next spring. The muck is heavy, and I must stop often to rest. Hurry along, Sarah, Mother calls from the door. Oh, Mary, I'm caught idle again. She got caught not doing her work. I think she's throwing manure on the garden. I am, pra I am to pound spices this day. Our house will have a, pleasant, a pleasing scent. The thump thump of mother's churning keeps me company. I wish I could tell mother about my dream, but she is quiet today, and I have often enough gotten the rod for speaking out of turn. So here she is. Mounding, uh, pounding spices, and it looks like her mother is churning butter, like we learned about earlier. Next, mother and I pr prepare the mid midday meal, and here it says 17th century Indian cornbread. So this is how they're making it. You boil three cups of water, stir in one cup of cor coarse cornmeal grits, simmer until water is observed, stirring absorbed, stirring occasionally, cool. When mixture is cool enough to handle, turn into work surface floured with one half cup fine cornmeal flour. Work into two round flat cakes. Bake on a floured cookie sheet at 400 degrees for three-fourths of an hour. Here is the bread that Sarah made, but it would probably not taste very good to us today. So here they are looking in the oven. When my new father comes home from dinner, he seems pleased with the rich porridge, oh, rich pottage, and warm Indian cornbread that we have made. 
So it looks like that's the pottage, and there's some sort of bird that they're eating, and there's the cornbread. After dinner, it's my favorite. It's time for my favorite task. I draw vinegar to polish the brass. If I am patient and rub the salt and vinegar slowly, the kettle will truly shine. All of a sudden, I hear a warning shot from the meeting house on the hill. It means a ship has been sighted. Perchance we will have some visitors on tomorrow's tide. I pray that they won't be people who wish us harm. Mother says I may fetch Elizabeth. We run to the top of the hill to see the ship, but it is still a tiny speck at sea. I dare not wait to see more. It is time for my lessons. So her lessons are after dinner. My new father thinks I show great talent for learning. I am grateful, for in many families, girls are not spared from their chores for lessons. My fingers are clumsy around the chalk, but it gets easier. Some day I may be able to read Mother the letters she gets from her relations in England. So there she is writing on a ch chalkboard. After the lesson, Elizabeth is waiting for me. I show her my new father's gift. She, he has made me a knicker box. Elizabeth and I take turns shooting. We keep score with scratches in the, in the sand. Today my marbles go through the arches more truly. Hers bounds back to her. I am winning, but the sun is beginning to lower, and I must get back to my chores. I feed the fire to heat the pottage again and milk the goats once more. The brown, big brown goat is troublesome. The more I push, the more she kicks. I will have a mark to show for her tomorrow. As I return from milking, my new father is coming home. He has news of the ships. It carries visitors to our village. There is much talk about where to lodge them and how to portion out the stores. After we've eaten, my new father quizzes me on my verses. I have been learning this one since, by heart since last Sabbath. It has words to turn my tongue into a knot. Psalm 100, a psalm for confession. Shout ye triumphantly to Jehovah all the earth. Serve ye Jehovah with gladness. Come before him with singing joy. Know ye that Jehovah he is God, he made us, and we not his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter ye his gates with confession, his courts with praise, confess ye to him, bless ye his name. For Jehovah is good, his mercy is forever, and his faith unto generation and generation. That is, ties my tongue in knots. This evening father is pleased with my learning. He hugs me with pride. Perchance he does like having a daughter. Mother calls for me. We set off for the spring to fetch water for tomorrow. We look out to the sea and see the ship. Perchance, Mother will have letters and a bolt of new cloth tomorrow. Now there is time for quiet conversing. Mother speaks first. She asks, asks how I'm liking my new father. I can truthfully say that I am becoming fond of him. It has been many months since I have seen Mother so glad. The air gets chill as we fill our buckets. It is getting towards sundown. The village quiet quiets as we turn homeward. Good morning. good morning. Father and mother talk in the candlelight. I bid them good night. I get my bedding ready and put my overgarments in the chest. Though I'm almost grown, I tell the day's events to my puppet. I tell her about the ship and the, in the harbor, winning knickers from Elizabeth and my dream. And best of all, I tell her of my new father's pride in my learning. It has been a fine day. I say my prayers and thank God for his bounty. Fare thee well, God be with thee.